Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about my favorite neutral paint colors from the top rated brands. I've been in the interior design industry for, oh man, so long now. I want to say like 15, 16 years. I remember at the beginning, it was just so difficult for me to pick the perfect paint color. I mean, you would think that because paint color goes on first in a renovation or an install, you pick that exclusive of everything else that's going on around it. Paint is the first thing that gets installed in a room, but in fact, it's the last thing that gets decided in a design concept. I'll be breaking down my favorites from Benjamin Moore, Sherman Williams, Dunn Edwards, Bear, and Farrell and Ball. I'll also be talking about the best rooms to put these paint colors, my take on trim and molding, the various types of sheens that should be used in each space. I'll also be breaking down the differences between the vendors and why you should go with one over the other. Let's get started. So to break it down, on the lower end spectrum, you'll have Bear Paints, which is about $30 to $40 per gallon. Then you'll have Dunn Edwards, Sherwin Williams, which ranges about $40 to $60 per gallon. And then you'll have Benjamin Moore, which is a little bit of a higher tier. It ranges between $40 and $80. I usually purchase the higher end spectrum of the $80 because it's a little bit more top of the line. And then obviously you have Ferro and Ball, which is like ultimate premium. The difference is not only the price, but the look of how the paint gets applied to the wall. Just imagine it's your lower end nail polish versus a higher end nail polish. Usually you guys will purchase nail polish according to like a color you love, right? If you've ever purchased nail polish like Chanel, which ranges, I want to say about like $16 and up versus a, you know, 99 cent store brand. The application has everything to do with the price. The higher end paint brands don't chip as easily. They're easier to clean. They have like a more saturated pigmented look. So of course you're paying for that value, but at the same time, a lower end brand like Bear could achieve the same look from afar, but of course with closer inspection, the quality isn't as great. So of course, you know, think about your budget and think about the application. Not all neutrals are created equal. In the industry, we have a term called grayish, which is a combination of gray and beige. Those are probably my favorite neutrals that I use time and time again. It's not too cool like a gray, it's not too warm like a beige, it's really a perfect medium between the two. From Benjamin Moore, I really love the whites that are tinted with a little bit of gray. Classic gray is a really great example of that. It's like a cool white, but with a hint of gray. You may get hung up on what the paint is actually called, whether or not they call it a gray or a beige or a white, when in actuality, it really is none of that. Don't get too hung up on what the color is actually called. Of course, I would get samples to apply on the walls first to figure out whether or not it looks right in the space. From the Benjamin Moore line, I actually really love Revere Pewter and Grey Owl. Those grays both have a tint of beige in it, so it's more of a warmer gray and really can work in any public space. I always try to push clients to use Benjamin Moore as often as I can. I know at $80 a gallon, it's not the cheapest, but the color just goes on so beautifully and so smoothly. It's probably my ultimate favorite. But if you wanted to go kind of a step down, Sherwin Williams and Dunn Edwards is a really great substitute. I use Dunn Edwards and Sherwin Williams probably about 75% of the time because not only do contractors love these colors, it's really affordable at a mid price range. But let's talk about Dunn Edwards first. There's a classic white from Dunn Edwards that I use for all of my trim and molding. It's a really, really beautiful, crisp, like solid, saturated white. I know you guys are probably thinking, I mean, it's just white, but in designer terms, not all whites are created equal. So of course, you know, if you wanted to pick like a really pure white, DEW 380 is the one that I use time and time again. 
I love it for casings, trim, base molding, crown molding, and even doors. You'll see that I've used it in a multitude of my custom home residential projects. It really can translate between cool tones and warm tones depending on the time of the day. Some of the grayishes I love from Dunn Edwards is faded gray, whisper gray, and antique paper. You'll see that I use antique paper in a lot of the public areas. What is contrasted with that white trim I really love, it's really cool, it's very elegant, and super modern at the same time. It really can transition from home to home no matter what your style is. Another really beautiful neutral from Dunn Edwards is Carrera. I've used this in kind of smaller homes just because Carrera has more of a cooler tone. Cooler tones just means that the neutral has a little bit more of a bluish gray tint to it. So it'll look really great in like a modern farmhouse type of home. I love it for smaller spaces just because the coolness doesn't seem too blue and it vibes off of raw natural finishes in farmhouse interiors really beautifully. Don't be afraid to go a little bit more saturated in smaller spaces like a bedroom or an office. I actually really love dark, sexy bedrooms as you guys could tell from my own master bedroom. But now that I have a new baby, I love really light, bright, airy spaces. So I've kind of transitioned to that dark and sexy to kind of light, bright, and airy. You'll see that Sherwin-Williams calls all of these three colors gray, but they couldn't be more different. I know from these thumbnails, you guys think it looks exactly the same, but that is why my trained eye as a designer can spot the differences. Dorian has more of like a greenish tint to it, while Mindful has almost like a pink clay tint to it. So the difference is you would either use it in like a really bright open airy space like an entry or a softer space like a bedroom where repost gray is a little bit brighter so that would look really beautiful for kitchen cabinets. I think everyone starts with bare paint colors just because that's what's readily available at Home Depot. I mean, Bear has come a really long way since like 20 years ago. Now their top of the line paint actually has primer built into it. So the thing that I love about it is you can get a really beautiful saturated coat with probably two applications. So there's nothing wrong with going cheaper if that fits within your budget. Some of my favorite beautiful neutrals are Soft Focus and Silky White. Even though they're on the lighter shade of neutrals, these two colors really can go in any single room in the home. If you're looking for a neutral with a little bit more of a tint of color, I love Wabi Sabi. It's almost like wasabi. So just think like a really cool kind of seafoam green, but it's not too pigmented, so it really can work in a bedroom. So remember how I talked about paint is the last thing that gets selected in any interior design project, but it's the first thing that gets applied on. Which pretty much means if you're undergoing a renovation or a remodel or you've purchased a new home, your contractor is going to push you to pick out a paint color first because that's the first thing that they're going to put on the walls. But since paint color could be custom made and mixed to anything in the home, it's a good rule of thumb for you to pick all of your finishes from the flooring to your tile to the stonework to your furnishings before you pick your paint color. That way you can ensure that your entire mood and the vibe of the space really goes together and it complements each other well. I always try to do little mood boards for my clients, showing them the different furnishings that go into a room. A combination of the bed, the dresser, the nightstands, some of the light fixtures. So once I pick a paint color, they'll see how it all ties in together. I know it's not the easiest thing to pick paint first before you even have furniture, so if you're kind of working backwards, just think about the largest piece of furniture in your space. If that's the bed or the bedding, you'll choose your paint color according to the vibe that you want in this space. Do you want everything to blend in or do you want a really high contrast look? So before you commit to any paint color for any space in your home, make sure you always buy a sample and paint it on the walls. I actually have my painters paint samples on little chips of paper so that I could tape them on the walls. 
at different times of the day, paint looks different. So of course, when you have paint on one wall versus another wall, it could look like an entirely different color depending on whether or not it's morning, noon, or night. If you're undergoing a renovation or a remodel, it's always a good idea to have all of your finishes set out and your paint chips right next to it. That way you can tell whether or not the neutral is gonna vibe with the different finishes that you pick, whether or not it's gonna enhance the look or blend in all together. Another question I always get asked is what type of sheen do you pick per room? As a rule, the more high traffic the area, the higher the sheen. So for instance, like the kitchen, which gets a lot of use and it might get dirt, grime, grease, oil from cooking, you want to use the highest sheen like a gloss or semi-gloss on the cabinets so that it makes it easier to clean. For the walls in the kitchen, I would either do a satin or an eggshell, which has a little bit of a sheen to it so that you can easily wipe it down, but it's in contrast against the semi-gloss or the high gloss cabinets. For moderate traffic areas like the bedroom, the dining room, the living room, or an office, you could get away with a flat or an eggshell. I love the look of flat because it's really modern. There's no sheen to it, which means when the light hits it, it's just flat. The only thing is, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to clean, so you may have to just go over it again with another coat of flat paint, or you can simply use a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, which pretty much takes off anything on the walls. For medium to high traffic areas like the laundry room or the bathroom, I would use a higher level sheen like satin. It still has a little bit of sheen so it'll bounce off light, plus it's durable and is super easy to clean. I know this is a lot of information to take in, but not all neutrals are created equal. You'll see the differences between the grays, the beiges, the grayges, or the neutrals with a slight hint of color. If you like this type of content or got some good tips from this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below if you have any questions when it comes to your favorite neutral paint colors and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.